talked about the president's policy of calculated ambivalence. Where does that manifest itself? What exactly are you talking about? Well, or even um, from my perspective, more than that, from the Secretary of State, uh, when, when you have uh, the president and his administration trying to second guess uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, then I think you, uh, you see what uh, I'm making reference to. The idea that uh, uh, our best ally in the Middle East, uh, the longest uh, serving democracy in that part of the world, and uh, there, there's any air between us and Israel uh, is beyond me. I, I don't understand uh, why this administration would criticize Israel uh, for trying to protect their citizens in their country uh, from a group who have clearly stated uh, that they will not be satisfied until Israel is wiped off the face of the earth. Uh, we need to be standing up with Israel, sending a strong message to those in the Middle East that would attack uh, this democracy, that we are their ally and they can count on us. Governor, we, we have heard the, the President and Secretary Kerry talk about Israel's right to defend itself. They did express their worries about the large number of civilian casualties that seem to be taking place in Gaza. And yesterday we heard Benjamin Netanyahu, the, the President, I'm sorry, the Prime Minister of Israel saying that he thinks the President and Kerry have been terrific. So you don't believe that? No, I, I think that there have been messages that have sent both publicly and privately uh, that have not been uh, strong in their support of Israel. I, I think when you look back at the, uh, the, the rhetoric and, and the, uh, what they've done, I, I don't think that they have been as strong with Israel as they should be. And, you know, and the fact is, you have Hamas that are using their children uh, to protect their missiles. And I think uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, was very forthright, very... Uh, specific when he said that Israel uses their missiles to protect their children. And there's a very different uh, perspective, if you will, and a very different result uh, in those uh, two people and their statements, and frankly, in, in, the, in the two organizations. If you, if. Governor, you've, you've long been a staunch supporter of Israel, but I wonder if you will, when you look at the pictures that we're seeing, and we, we know that uh, Netanyahu has expressed his regret for the civilian deaths. But when you look at the 1,700-plus Palestinian deaths in Gaza, uh, the large majority of which are civilians, we are told, um, what, is, what is your thought about that? What is your reaction to that? Well, war is a horrible thing. Uh, there are uh, individuals who uh, lose their lives in, in war. Uh, but when we have a fairly good understanding that Hamas is actually using their citizens as shields. At that particular point in time, um, it, it loses a lot of the, um, the power, if you will, from my perspective, is when you use your civilians as a shield, that speaks volumes about who you are and what you believe in. Uh, when you look back at uh, Hamas's statements, about they will not be satisfied until Israel is wiped off the face of the earth, then you start understanding the mentality a little bit better of uh, a, a terrorist organization like Hamas. Let me turn you to uh, the border crisis uh, specifically uh, that has been in the headlines recently for the unaccompanied minors that are crossing the Rio Grande largely to come into the United States. Um, the president has said because Congress has not dealt with the immigration issue at all, but he feels he has to do this on his own. Um, what we are led to believe by reports is that, is that the president uh, may, in fact, uh, make some moves that would perhaps cut down on the number of deportations uh, that are taking place now, for which he's been widely criticized by the Latino community, and that he may, in fact, give a temporary um, status uh, to those without documents that are currently in the U.S. What do you think of both those? things well I think that is a side issue uh, what we are uh, substantially more concerned about in the state of Texas and I will suggest to you across this country are the 80 percent plus of the individuals uh, who don't get talked about enough uh, that are coming into the United States illegally and committing substantial crimes since September of 08 
uh, we have seen 203,000 individuals who have illegally come into the United States, into Texas, uh, booked into Texas county jails. And Candy, uh, these individuals are responsible for over 3,000 homicides and almost 8,000 sexual assaults. I wish the president would uh, respect that desire of Texans and the citizens of this country uh, to secure the border. That's the real issue here, and one that all too often uh, gets deflected by the conversation about unaccompanied minor children, which that is a tragedy. The idea that uh, parents are putting their kids or they're being forced to get on a, a train or a bus and travel 15 to 1800 miles where they're uh, very exposed to being abused, both physically and otherwise. But the, the fact from my perspective as the governor of Texas, it's the reason that we are deploying a thousand National Guard troops so that the people of the state of Texas will feel that at least the leadership in the state of Texas is doing something uh, to try to make their communities safer. And that is Governor. my goal. Uh, I intend to continue to be focused on that as we go forward. Governor, um, I, I have to point out that a number of fact checkers have said that that 3,000 homicide figure is, is wildly off. But let me talk about the National Guard that you want to send. And this is the, the state sending the National Guard. As I understand it, it's going to cost you $12, $13 million a month. How long are you prepared uh, to spend Texas money uh, to keep the Guard? at the border we'll continue to do what we have to do to keep our citizens safe and let me go back to those numbers um, you know what is the what are the number of uh, uh, I do stand by them by the way but what are the number of homicides that are acceptable to those individuals how many sexual assaults do we have to have before the president of the United States in Washington DC acts to keep our citizens safe that border is not secure and we see it every day not just in Texas but I will suggest to you the other 47 contiguous states of individuals who are committing crimes against our citizens. It's time for us to secure that border. So you are prepared, I understand you, to keep the National Guard uh, along the border uh, to help uh, the current border guards in perpetuity? Is there the kind of money, is there the kind of do. support in uh, Texas for that? What I'm prepared to do is not just the National Guard, but our Department of Public Safety, our Texas Ranger Recon teams, the Parks and Wildlife Wardens that we have uh, deployed there. And, and then I will suggest to you there will be other uh, individuals who come to assist in securing that border. That's what I think that's what the American people want. They'd like to see a president who leads this country and says, you know what, we do have a problem on our southern border. We're going to deal with it. And the president refuses to lead on this from my perspective. And, Governor, to those who say that your calling up of the National Guard in Texas is a part of your road uh, to become president and to run for president again, your response is? I'm the governor of the state of Texas. My citizen's safety is what's uh, foremost here. And I uh, hadn't got anything to do with anything other than those numbers of individuals who are coming across the border. Uh, and when you think about the idea that some of them are from uh, countries that have substantial terrorist ties, whether it's Pakistan or Afghanistan or Syria, we are historic record highs with individuals being apprehended from those countries. We say it's time to secure the border. Hadn't got anything to do with anything other than the American citizens expect Washington to respect the Constitution and secure the border. One of the things that's actually enumerated in the Constitution, we'd like for them to do their duty. Governor Rick Perry, as always, I thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Candy.